911, what is your emergency? Uh, we are on the highway and there's a person in the middle of the highway that two cars just ran over. It's a female. It's a female? Okay. And do we know if she's conscious? They're saying that she's dead. Alex was laying out on a highway where there was very high speed traffic. And she was holding a binder of her court paperwork, treatment paperwork. And it was a stack of papers about this thick. It represented all those aspects of her life that were weighing her down. Alex was raised by an addict and then became an addict. She was just a shell. She had lost um, so much of what made her her. It was just like difficult to even look at her face. I think she really wanted help. I just think she couldn't navigate staying alive. I don't think that she wanted to die. I believe that Alex was trying to get into mental health court when she stepped out into the road. Oregon is a prime example of how not to do mental health. The state legislature has largely walked away from community mental health. As a result, we have a lot of folks walking the streets with untreated mental illness. And that's not okay, because what happens when you have a community that looks like that is that police officers are expected to be, or have to be, mental health workers. But that's not what they're paid to do. And sometimes when we have police officers being our frontline mental health workers, bad things happen. So really we have to look at the overall mental health system. And in Oregon, uh, I give us an F. Right now, Oregon, I believe, is fourth in the nation for addiction rate per thousand. But I think we're either 48th or 49th for treatment access. And that's a recipe for disaster. So DAs and sheriffs and police, we have to pick up the slack and create programs of our own to try to address these issues, unless we just want to be processors of people coming in and out of prison. I remember running for this office for the first time. I would be asked repeatedly, what about mental health issues? And I never had any really good answers, except to say the criminal justice system and the mental health system don't mix right now. The DA in the justice system is a key player. Uh, they're the ones making the charging decision. They're the ones uh, making the plea negotiations. They're the ones that have to try the case. They're the ones that decide if someone ought to be diverted into a program to get them healthy. So the DA is in many ways um, hold the keys to the kingdom. I don't know where to start in finding my jury instructions. And I came in with a prosecution mindset and thinking the way you hold people accountable is jail and probation. And I still think that's true for certain people. But I saw the success stories. I was seeing the data. I was seeing that the recidivism rate was low. So I was very, very convinced at that point that our specialty courts do need to be a tool in our toolkit. Thank you. Thank you. We established our mental health court almost four years ago. Accountability is a key component of all of these diversion programs, they're not easy. In many ways, they're harder than just going to prison. And they're 18 month or longer programs. They gotta show up every week. There is an incredible need for 
um, qualified mental health professionals. So it's a tough, demanding program. And for a lot of them, for the first time in their lives, that's the real structure that they haven't had before. Mental Health Court can help those folks be held accountable, stay clean, be on the meds that help them, and see friendly faces every week that are there to help. And importantly, keep them out of jail. And that's the payoff, is because they won't be out there offending others in the community to support their habits or because they have a mental health diagnosis and they need help. When you identify the right candidate, it can be successful. Alex was having trouble connecting with services. She had trauma from childhood that was never fully dealt with. Her way out was she started drinking and doing marijuana as a teenager, and then later she started doing harder drugs. Alex was not a criminal. I mean, sex work would be her only crime and, and drugs. She wanted to be admitted, and she wanted help getting off of drugs, and she wanted you know, to learn some new skills. And um, there was no place for her. Right now, the way it's currently set up, you have to be, you get funneled into those programs through the criminal justice system and be charged with a crime is the first step. This is the way the system is set up. There needs to be some type of hook on them so that we can do the programs the way they're intended to do, which is to get them into treatment, to get them into uh, supervision, to assist them with the services uh, that they need. But we just haven't been able to figure out in Polk County that next step. Um, to get people into a system that doesn't involve the criminal justice process. Specialty courts are higher risk. We don't take people who, you know, maybe have a possession charge against them one time or something like that. These are people who are criminally involved and are high risk of reoffending and you know, getting back into their addiction. She came in on a charge which was, you know, minor. My role is to say sometimes, I don't think this person's a good fit for the program. Uh, they're not high risk enough. They're not the type of person who would mesh well with the other people in the program given the types of crimes they may have committed. I think it's senseless that our system is set up in such a way that a person would have to commit a crime in order to receive supportive services. If she did want to get into drug court and she had to hurt someone in order to get into it, she wouldn't have hurt someone. Staring at this picture. I really felt like she could do anything, like be anything. She was just brilliant. Life is like a path they say it hurts if you don't know the way, but someone say real life the gray that you find. I think if the state had offered some type of program that was maybe a wraparound care program that would coordinate different services, I think that would have helped. It's like clear that she just needed help. I mean, just like someone, you know, give her a fucking hug not put her behind bars. I felt tremendous sadness for her and her family. That is a situation where everyone involved um, were looking for paths uh, to help her. Yes. 
and all the services we knew that we had at the time were being extended and she was participating in it. It's a tragedy that at the end of the day, we weren't able to get there. I sincerely think that the current challenge in mental health and behavioral health, which we're seeing so much more of in the population coming in, is probably one of the defining issues of my service in public safety. We need to find more options for people who have unique um, mental health needs. And we're moving in that direction. I think if we had a system that was set up in a supportive way, not in a shaming way, I believe that children like Alex, you know, could have thrived.